about my area code. Well, you can find that at CheshireCatalyst.com slash 321. For those who don't know the story, I'm the fellow who went to the Public Service Commission hearing when they split 407 in Central Florida. I explained to them, Cape Canaveral, the countdown capital of the world, should get 321, and then presented them with printout from the North American Numbering Plan Administration showing it was available. They loved the idea, and I figure, I asked for it. They approved it, so it must be my area code, right? <laughs> but I share. <laughs> so let's uh, go back and find a message that, um, that I did sign with my regular signature tag. I actually have that as a sound on my trio phone. Ah, yes, my uh, evil scum file is where I receive phishing mail, which I forward on to their respective companies, uh, usually to eBay, PayPal, and my bank. Phishing mail from other banks I don't worry about, but from my bank, I want my bank protected. So I forward them, uh, explaining that should they, uh, you know, first I cut out the header information that doesn't always go with the forwarding attachment. I paste that in. Let I'll tell you what. Um, let me find one that I've sent. And this shouldn't take too long. Um, Verify your bank account for forwarded. Yes, this should do. So, hi there. Pardon? Yes, well, some of you do, but um, attaches a phishing message I recently received. Uh, you'll notice that my signature is indented the five spaces. <laughs> then I in, uh, dent five spaces and put the, uh, the closing uh, parentheses as a Cheshire smile. Um, then, you know, Richard Cheshire, comma, hacker. Let them know where I'm coming from. But then I give them the address of cheshirecatalyst.com slash perspective.html. That's the one I use for my introduction, which uh, asks the question, just who is this guy? So that they'd have a clue. Um, remember, no one's clueless if you give them clues. Um, so then I go, equal sign, equal sign, BT, BT, begin included text. And I include the header of the message as I copied it out, and then another clue for them, end of included text. And this is how I will include something that, since it's only a textual email, I have to give them clues as to what is the part I'm cutting out and sending to them. And then below that is the actual forwarding via the Yahoo mail of the message I got. Verify your account information, blah, blah, blah. And of course, when we put the cursor on the link, the verify your online banking access, we can see, well, if we go to view status bar and then hover over, we can see at the bottom that it's going to uh, angelpath.jp slash upload slash blah, 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 slash bankofamerica.com slash bankofamerica. So the URL is put in there, but as a directory name. And there are those who will you know, just see, oh, well, it's got Bank of America in there. I guess it's OK to click. And no, I'm not going to click it even now, because you don't want to incur these people at all. Um, so back to the topic, I think. Um, and then we'll go even farther off topic. But uh, the, the point I'm making is that people don't understand that a message that comes on paper had an origination where someone signed the message. Now, why am I harping on that? As I said before, I'm a ham radio operator. When I worked ham radios in Homestead, Florida, after Hurricane Andrew, and it hasn't gotten much better since then, I can tell you, because I've worked hurricanes since then, we found we sent messages up into the EOC, the Emergency Operations Center. They scrawled them on, on paper and handed them into the pit. Now the pit of an emergency operations center is where all the ESFs are, are co-located. There are desks uh, in a semicircle around the podium where the emergency manager uh, usually stands to present to his presentation. <laughs> but um, the ESFs are the emergency service functions. Um, ESF one is transportation. 
got to reopen those roads. ESF2 is communication. That's where us hands hang out. Uh, and ESF3, uh, there's, there's police, there's fire, there's mass feeding, mass care. Um, some of them only go up to about ESF16. Florida has ESF17 uh, for animal care. Uh, they found out that, you know, all these horses and, and dogs and uh, cats running loose, uh, they had to deal with that too. So they have their own ESF now, their own emergency service function. We would send a message into the EOC. It would get handed off into the pit and handed to, say, Highway Patrol. Highway Patrol would then have to go down their chain of command, verify the information, get that back up, and then they would dispatch assistance. They didn't understand the concept that a message had someone who sent it. And usually if it's through the hams, uh, we will verify it was sent by that person, usually asking for a signature, because that's how our messages are handled. Uh, we have the tradition of message traffic handling. Because a lot of our guys were ham operators, some of them whom worked for the Washington Union Telegraph Company. You know, we knew the procedures. Um, you'll find that after an emergency, the ham operators get a lot of credit for, uh, for doing a lot of things with communication. And it's because we know what we're doing. We train ourselves on it. We are allowed by the federal government to play with radios on, on our own specific radio frequencies. And when there is an emergency, we are happy to help out in return for allowing us to play with those radios and frequencies. Because radios can cross national borders, it has been decided that national governments must license transmitters. Now, there are some governments that don't want people transmitting things across national borders, but for places like the U.S., where it's allowed, it's, it's simply regulated, loosely regulated, and in the ham community, self-regulated. Um, and we do our part. We help out a lot. Uh, a lot of the radio art came from ham radio, the people who played with the stuff. I play with something. The reason I got my ham license is something called packet radio, data communications over ham radio. And when somebody first said, Ozzy, you heard about packet radio? What's that? Oh, it's data communications over ham radio. <gasps> what? A data comm mode that I can't play with? Where's those Morse code tapes? <laughs> After 20 years of listening to shortwave radio, BBC World Service, Radio Canada International, Radio Naked Launch, et cetera, I finally broke down, learned Morse code, got my ham ticket, and six months later, they did away with the Morse code requirement for the, uh, the easiest <laughs> ticket. That's okay. It only meant that more of my computer buddies could get into the game. Now, I was limited because I didn't have code to 50 megahertz and above the VHF range. That meant I could only play with things like, oh, space satellites? Yeah, right. A real restriction. No problem. <laughs> I f uh, Ten years later, I finally did break down and go for my general. Um, but uh, I still haven't got the radios to play with it. But I do play HF once a year if I'm lucky, twice a year if I'm not. The once a year is on ham radio field day when our radio club goes up, picks up its radios, sets up in an unprepared field, usually a picnic ground, and for a 24-hour period, we try to contact other stations. If I'm not lucky, there's a hurricane or something, <laughs> and I have to go to a Red Cross shelter and play radios. And, uh, you know, we use HF and VHF and whatever's available to get the word out. Uh, my adventures um, are on the internet for Hurricane Andrew, and um, we can link to them some other time. Um, but the concept of getting the message through, and that it does come from somebody who signed off on that message, uh, is a real concept that uh, a lot of people need to, to deal with. Um, are there any questions on any of that? So yes. Oh, well, first off, um, with ham radio, if you're going to send a message via ham radio, via a ham operator, you are generally going to put something on paper and hand it off to him. Because in our tradition, we simply copy what you've put down. Now, a lot of times, a shelter manager will just say, uh, we need 50 cots. And, you know, we'll write out the message, and we will sign it with the signature of the shelter manager. Uh, but he gave us the instructions to send the message, so we can put down a signature that he said so, and that message signature means he said so. So that when we send that message into uh, Red Cross uh, headquarters via the EOC, you know, a couple hours later, here come the cots. Um, an interesting thing, too, is usually when you put in a request for supplies of some kind, the radio room never hears back. But stuff shows up hours later. You know, no one ever sends an acknowledgment that they got the message or anything else. 
but um, you know, stuff does show up eventually. Uh, just <coughs> something I've happened to notice. So, any other? Yes. Uh-huh, yes. Well, from Toronto, I don't think it would go via Newfoundland to get to the U.S. Well, the trick with telegrams, the question being that, um, you know, I, I've been showing some of these old telegrams off uh, the web page. Um, do I have examples? And at the local office, uh, they might have more information about the origination um, because you need to be able to trace back a telegram if need be. Uh, but usually what goes to the customer uh, isn't, doesn't have all the information, just enough for them to be able to look up in the book and trace it back to the last relay station it came from. Yeah, so that uh, if, if there was a screw up, you could trace it back. I'm trying to repeat it for the radio audience here. Um, the, the thing there is that in the bad old days of the telegraph, you didn't have a whole lot of room for a long line of message headers. In the internet age, you can just add another line with another uh, host routing that a message passed through uh, and have a you know, complete record back. But you would just have it back to the last realization you were supposed to keep records of the previous relay station that it got it from, so you could trace it back that way. Very labor-intensive process to trace back a message like that. And uh, in the internet age, you just put another line in the message header. In fact, on packet radio messages, by the way, uh, I should add that in packet radio, we still to this day have computer bulletin board systems called packet bulletin board systems that you can send email from radio operator to radio operator via computers over the radio. Um, you can, down in Florida, pardon? Uh, the error rate, uh, it's, it, oh, bit rate. Um, the user bit rate is 1,200 baud. And uh, there are 9,600 baud uh, links uh, between um, network nodes. And this may seem slow by today's standards, but you'll find that we in Ham Radio think slow is better than dead stop. We're at least getting the message through. And I have told my mother, never worry about me during a hurricane because I will be in a safe, warm Red Cross shelter working message traffic. <laughs> yes. Yes. My thoughts on text messaging now being, uh, uh, is, is would that be descended from Telegram? Uh, text messaging being direct user-to-user -user communications uh, does not need uh, formal tracebacks. Um, and it was mentioned that I use UPOC, UPOC.com, which originally stood for Universal Point of Contact, but is now just the initials lost in the mists of time. Um, and I'm user 2600, uh, excuse me, Cheshire 2600 on UPOC for anyone who wants to uh, communicate with me that way. Um, so oh, good, don't give me hyper rate. Uh, the text messaging, I found, by the way, and in hurricane situations, I was in Port Charlotte following Hurricane Charlie, and I found that while voice calls could not go out over the cellular towers, SMS messages, short message service messages, text messages were getting through. It's a lot less bandwidth. You're limited to only 160 characters, but it's amazing how much you can pack in that when you need to. Of course, we had our radios, and we could send formal message traffic uh, that way as well. But for someone who's trapped in a disaster area after an event, try your text messaging. Uh, there's a darn good chance it may still work. Okay, um, I seem to have some extra time. And um, apparently I forgot to submit a topic for a talk that I'll use the time for. Hmm? 
Well, um, if you'll recall, let's see, Cheshire uh, Catalyst.com Flash Talk. HTML. Two years ago, I was here with the topic "Flash Sucks for Advertisers." Well, I'm afraid I'm still harping on it. Two years later, Coke Rewards. Dot com. Oops, I must have misspelled. My Coke Rewards. Hmm. Oh, okay, we'll just click the link, yeah. Click that one there. Sorry, you don't have Flash. Now, I've got a backpack out of these people. Um, I've gotten nifty stereo headphones, a little Coca-Cola thing, you know, <laughs> lined up headphones. I love these things, cost me about 250 points. And uh, they're really handy, I really love them. But I have to go to the library in order to order anything. You see, I can't even enter my codes on the screen. Uh, fortunately, they let me send SMS text messages, and I have a very large text messaging package on my, uh, my mobile phone. I like to use the term mobile phone, by the way, not cell phone. Uh, Sailor is the technology in use. They are mobile phones. And another of my pet peeves is when people say an 800 number. No, no. Toll-free number. Please get into the habit, people, because there's 800, 888, 877, 866, 855, and the others are on their way. So they are toll-free numbers. Catch your friends on it. It's, it's, you can always remember it better when you're trying to correct somebody else. So um, this is my pet peeve. Um, you know, you're spending so much money trying to get People, uh, people's attention to your website. Um, let me show you one of my websites. att31.com. I've been grateful to Bell South Mobility for uh, my phone number. Well, you see, I share my area code, but um, I saved the best phone number for myself. If you really want to reach my cell phone, I really shouldn't put it out like this, but I will. To reach my cell phone, you dial three two, one, liftoff. <laughs> Thank you. Now, I got that number back in the days before number portability, and I ran down to the kiosk as soon as I heard that my area code was going to be put into existence. I said, hi, I want 5438633, please. She called Melbourne office, and they said, no, I'm sorry, sir. The boys in Melbourne tell me that that number is in the middle of a 100 group on a corporate rate, totally unavailable. Oh. OK. Went home, went up on the net, bellsubability.com, about the company. Ah, Mark Fiedler is the president, huh? Too bad I don't have his email address. Let me look around here some more. Ah, the press room. Mm -hmm. Oh, a press release? That's interesting. Ah, the email address of a publicity flack. First name, underscore, last name, at. Compose. Two. Mark, underscore, Fiedler, at. Dear Mr. Fiedler. Blah, 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 my area code, blah, 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 may it please have. So as of the 1st, 1999, my phone number will be 321 liftoff. Send. Look at my watch. <sighs> 6 30 p.m. on a Friday. No way I can possibly hear from this guy until Monday, probably Tuesday, Sunday afternoon. You have new mail. Sure, I'll get my people on it. <laughs> I've been very grateful to Bell South Mobility ever since. Well, Bell South Mobility had a NASCAR. They were sponsoring Joe Nemechek in the number 42 um, NASCAR for BellSouthMobility.com. Uh, when they switched to singular, they didn't get singular racing. I waited that year until after the Daytona 500 and then bought SingularRacing.com. And I've been running a fan website ever since. So here we've got some graphics showing that it's going from uh, Bell South Mobility to singular to now the future. And every week, Oh, yeah, and uh, y you got a free Coke Zero because they won the, the Coke Zero 600 with one of the uh, uh, Coca-Cola Racing Family drivers. And every week I go up and I, you know, add to um, the statistics the uh, starting position, the finish position, the cut points that they've got this week. The next race will be the All-State 400 at the Brickyard, which currently page not found when you click there because they haven't posted the entry list yet. 
But these are all derived uh, web addresses, and it will be at the data underscore entry list dot HTML once they put it up. Now, I can't always get online to update uh, my website when I want to. So there are some little dots down here. And the dots will go to entry list, qualification list, lineup, uh, the unofficial results, and then the official results of last week. So if we go to the unofficial results of the last one, it'll come up and give the official results for the last race, which is the lifelock.com 400. Um, now this is the same as clicking on lifelock.com 400 right now, but you'll notice that this one's still the unofficial race results because I haven't updated. Usually I wait till the following race, and then when I put up the unofficial results, I go back and delete the letters UN for unofficial, and it becomes the web address for the official results. So, you know, I just deal with this when I can. And furthermore, all I have to do, let's see, view, page source, and come on down here a ways. What you'll find is all future races remarked out. This means that on my TRIO 650 cell phone, I can use the FTP application, the file transfer protocol application I've downloaded. I can download my web page, edit it on the phone, and put it back up on the web, usually from my local bar where I'm watching the race. I love getting the results up on my website before jsky.com sends me the text message with the results. And um, it's, it's just an ego thing with me on being able to do that. It doesn't really mean anything. I doubt if anyone's really watching, but it's a fun thing to do. Uh, but you'll notice, no flash. I've got some graphics on here. Uh, I, I linked to their stuff. I swiped their graphics because people who are interested in my website would be interested in these special deals. Oh, and I used to uh, be a Palm Pilot salesman, so uh, I've got special deals on Palm Pilots that connect to the internet and um, AT&T as well. Uh, Jeff Burton is driving for uh, AT&T. And one thing I do, I don't think anybody else does, is I list the associate sponsors on the car. Because if you're into NASCAR, sponsorship is everything uh, with NASCAR. And actually, I'm not that interested in NASCAR. My interest is in advertising. And boy, if you want to watch advertising in action, go to a NASCAR race. So, being simply a fan website, this is what I do. Now, I think I've got um, att or att31.com slash uh, linux.html. Some, um, no, I guess not. Um, once in a while, uh, well, when Linux, uh, when the race is in Loudoun, New Hampshire, which is near where uh, Linux uh, tools are, uh, the car gets painted up with Linux colors, and the car at the top will be changed out to the Linux colors. When Prilosec races in Texas, uh, I change out to a picture of the Prilosec car. I keep up with it. Three years after I started this, I got the lawyer letter from, H from uh, uh, what was then Singular, saying I was cyber squatting. No. Oh, and that I was infringing their trademark. I went up on USPTO.gov, the US Patent and Trademark Office. Uh, website, and um, turned out that I put in singular racing, no such trademark. The 18 forms of singular they had in there, none of them had racing as a protected form of the word mark. Trademark, I replied, what trademark? Never heard a word from them again. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, this one I'm proud of. You'll notice here a graphic showing uh, the, the B post of the car with the various uh, stickers for a snap-on, for GM card, and you'll notice that the little finger says I can click on these, like uh, say for Fig Newtons. If I click on that, it takes me to the, the Nabisco page with Fig Newton that says, get flash or get gone. <laughs> well, that's not my fault, that's you know on their head. But um, even Coca-Cola, going to the Coca-Cola racing family, take me to mycokerewards.com, you know, look, Guys, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to send you people. It's your fault. Uh, Sherwin-Williams. But this is old HTML. This is a use map, which just says take anything in these coordinates 
And when you click it, send it off to this web page. What do you need Flash for? Yeah, up here, I, I kind of have this one as a little Easter egg. Jeff uh, Burton's signature on the car, that'll send you out to jeffburton.com. But even he says, you need a high-speed internet connection and download Flash here. Guys, come on. It's unnecessary. Well, let me take you to another website I'm fairly proud of. Museums of Brevard dot, well, I'm going to put in dot com. It's really dot org. But of course, I bought dot com as well, and it takes you to dot org. That's just how it should be done. You'll notice I've got links at the top that take you to the various museums all in the list below. So if I click on the historical commission, up comes the commission. You'll notice I've got the graphics laid out with text on the left and graphics on the right. The next one is graphics on the left, text on the right, and it intersperses like this. Well, the trick is, what happens when a museum pulls out of this group? Um, what we do then, or what I do then, since I'm the webmaster, let's see, museums.txt. This is the file that gets read. It's got um, a, an eight letter short name, which is used for the hyperlink to go to that museum. The name of the museum, the hyperlink to the museum, the name of the JPEG, the width and the height of the JPEG, the alt text I should put under the JPEG, and then the text that should go into the record. And then I just run the program to regenerate the page. You don't need Flash for this stuff. Uh, I also have uh, uh, top.html for the stuff at the top. It generates the list and then generates the rest of the page. And at the bottom, I have links to bottom.html, which all gets added together because um, the Museum Association gets funding from the Brevard Cultural Alliance and from the Space Coast Office of Tourism. My good friend, Bonnie King. Bonnie King hates my guts. <laughs> Bonnie King, the head of the Brevard County Tourist Bureau, wants my phone number really bad. <laughs> 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 That's okay. There's no reason to bother her. But it is on the website at museumsofbrevard.org. Sorry? <laughs> Maybe for the social engineering panel. <laughs> we'll patch her in, perhaps. But I had fun coming up with this and the concept of alternating the graphics and, and the text. The people like it. The hard part was when people like the planetarium wanted to add things about the planetarium show. And I'm going, oh, I can't do that. Then I figured out how. I said, oh, okay. It was just adding an extra field that would then do column span two and put in the message they wanted. So once you stop and think about it, you can think of how to, how to get things done. Well, that's hacker attitude anyway. Um, but the message to the advertisers is, what's the problem with setting up a, an alternate non-flash site? Look, you're billing for the flash. Okay, so you get to bill more because it costs more to create the flash. You get to bill more because you need heavier hardware to create it. You even need heavier hardware to just show it to the CEO. You got to replace his whole computer system so you can show him what you're selling him. Well, it, uh, depending on you know, well, they're going to have it with all the high-end graphics and you know. But the thing is that they get to to put all this into their billings. You know what? You can bill for a text-based site as well, and for a just plain JPEG graphics site, have that little you know, no flash click here and not piss people off. How many folks are still out there with web TV? They can't even download Flash. And, well, some are still out there. Uh, and the, the, the thing is, it's not that hard. It can be done. They're just not doing it. And it's bothersome. <laughs> you. Well, um, I'm about through with my comments. Any other questions? Very good. Well, thank you very much. Oh, I do want to make some other comments. Um, I have brought some of my uh, e-books with me. Um, my little e-book, Of Course There are Secrets, they're in the manual, is available. It's in all HTML. I have it on CD-ROM or on flash drive, with a little thing on the back. And uh, the CDs are $15, the flash drives are 20 And you know, I really couldn't afford to come to the conference. But for the past year, I've had a job where I had to wear neckties. And uh, I don't have that job anymore. 
But over the year, I've been collecting a bunch of neckties on eBay. <laughs> Fun, with telephones on them. Here's the most interesting one, Bell System logo. The Bell logo is upside down. <laughs> All of these ties are now on eBay. If you visit CheshireCatalyst.com slash ties, you will find links. Or in the eBay search bar, just put Cheshire's tie, uh, singular on tie on, on eBay, and you'll find my ties. Um, I put them up last Saturday night. Oh, I guess that means they will time out this Saturday night while I'm here at the conference. Well, doesn't that mean that you are the purchaser of the tie? You can pick it up from me on Sunday here at the conference. What a concept. I wish I'd thought of that. <laughs> so uh, please, I hope you'll visit the website. You can come up here and look at the ties as well.